A mysterious people laid forgotten for well over 2,000 years, but for centuries they ruled an empire that ripped through the Near East, bringing destruction to once great kingdoms. These were the Hittites, a dynasty that emerged from the north, and although they disappeared from the human record, they left an impressive legacy behind for both the Middle East and the world. This is Ancestoria, the kingdom of iron and blood. The first record of the Hittites is a king named Labarna, a descendant of Indo-Europeans who forged one of many small kingdoms in Anatolia. It was a land of turmoil amid warring states and during his reign he overwhelmed his enemies through military might. Nation after nation fell to his armies until his border reached the sea by 1650 BC. Throughout the centuries, the Hittites were forced to combat threats from within and enemies on their borders, but with every conquest, they were able to unify many different groups of people and incorporate them into the fabric of the empire. Additionally, when they faced disobedient vassals, they often attempted to come to terms with them before embarking on military action, and many vassals often stayed loyal in large part due to the great autonomy the Hittites gave them. In the early days of the empire, they were essentially raider kings, rustling cattle, sheep, and riches from lands beyond their borders. Through these raids, they reintroduced writing to Anatolia in the form of literate prisoners who were then folded into the bureaucracy, but they also introduced things to the region that would have devastating consequences to the world. In 1350 BC, the Hittites brought Egyptian prisoners back to the homeland where they spread the first documented outbreak of smallpox. The smallpox virus was incredibly deadly, killing over 300 million people from 1900 to 1977 AD when it was finally eradicated. Early on, various kings launched campaigns into Syria, western Anatolia, and even led incursions into Mesopotamia where they destroyed the city of Babylon. This plunged the Babylonian kingdom into chaos, proving the early strength of the fledgling kingdom and eventually they became strong enough that they could seize and hold territory. After the final destruction of the great kingdom of Yahad, which had ruled over Syria for 300 years, a new hostile menace capitalized and conquered Syrian territory. This was the kingdom of Mitanni who became one of the Hittites' greatest enemies. The war against Mitanni lasted for the reign of several Hittite kings who leveraged both military power and diplomatic treaties to form alliances and non-aggression pacts with other states. The Hittite king who had in large part crushed Mitanni's power was Shapili Luma who crossed the Euphrates and struck their capital with little forewarning. Shortly after, they conquered their allies and vassals, leaving a large belt of victories stretching from the Euphrates to the Mediterranean. This in large part put an end to Mitanni and allowed Assyria to resurge and fill the power vacuum. Without the common enemy in Mitanni to separate them, the Hittites began to war with Egypt for control of lucrative coastal territories that were at the center of the Mediterranean trade network. Many battles would take place between these two great empires, culminating with the Battle of Kadesh in 1286 BC. This was a massive battle featuring the largest deployment of chariots in military history and newly developed siege weaponry to easily breach enemy walls. This battle also saw deliberate misinformation used as a weapon by the Hittites that allowed them to shatter an entire Egyptian division, almost annihilating them as a result. The outcome was essentially a draw, but it exhausted Egyptian and Hittite forces that were not easily replaceable. 17 years later, they decided to conclude the first peace treaty in history in order to safeguard their own interests. And true to their vow, the two empires never fought another war against each other, establishing a precedent for peaceful relations in the wider region. The Hittites have long been associated with a unique ability to manufacture iron weapons and equip their armies to decimate their enemies in the field of battle. However, there isn't much evidence to support this idea. The reason being is that bronze is actually superior to iron as long as you have access to a vast trade network. Bronze is generally more durable than iron and it is easier to manufacture. And while it is unlikely that they equipped large portions of their armies with iron weapons, it certainly appears that the Hittites were beginning to develop advanced techniques for the manufacture of high quality iron. This included the invention of a high temperature chimney furnace called a bloomery, which allowed the blacksmiths to push out impurities that would otherwise weaken the final product. However, in the closing decades of the Bronze Age, the Hittite Empire suffered from insurmountable problems. 
Long periods of drought combined with years of mass and military expeditions crippled food production in the Hittite realm and thus they were forced to rely on grain imports from Cyprus and Egypt for their survival. And around 1178 BC, a group referred to as the Sea Peoples disrupted this vital transport. Suffering under famine and disease, the lords of Hattusa were pressed by enemies on their borders and by powerful vassals declaring independence. The ironsmiths likely fled to rival empires as the flames of war threatened the destruction of their homeland and their techniques would help transition the region to an age of iron while the chaos led the last Hittite king to abandon the capital and disappear into the world, ending one of the greatest empires of the Bronze Age. This is Ancestoria, the history of our ancestors. <laughs>